So again, welcome uh, to Dog Skills, the human end of dog training. It's going to be weekly on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock um, Eastern Time. And I wanted to share with you a, a story with me of mine. So when I was a kid, um, I grew up in Ohio, and I basically, you know, was stuck in this state that didn't really allow any off-leash dogs. I didn't really have any off-leash dog areas. I mean, now it has a lot of fenced in dog parks. But well, back when I was a kid, I didn't know of any. There could have been some, but it wasn't really known to me. And definitely like all of the parks that you could walk your dogs in with all these nice hiking trails, they all had leash, leash laws. So you always had to have your dog be on a leash. And I had this dream to eventually be able to hike with my dog off the leash. So my first dog was Heather and she was a Sheltie or a Shetland sheep dog. And I had a field behind our house and some woods. And I had her when I was like eight years old. And no one really seemed to care if I hiked with Heather back there off the leash. And then when she passed away and I got shadow, I, I kind of replayed that same pattern, but technically it probably wasn't really legal. Although again, nobody cared. I think probably a lot of people even knew that I walked back there. They were just owned by um, different, you know, people that had houses around there. And I just had this dream that I could just hike somewhere randomly and let my dog be off the leash and when I moved to Utah that dream came alive because they had all these mountains where you legally could let your dog be off the leash and I remember the first time I had Shadow off the leash I was just ecstatic and you know Shadow wasn't as you know polished as you know my uh, uh, Seiki ended up being with with the recall but I did have a lot of fun with hiking with Shadow. And I definitely had a role that Shadow had to stay within my sight. Um, Seiki, however, because I got him when um, I had already moved to Utah, I was able to just have a lot of freedom and be able to just let him be off the leash once we had a good recall. And he would go out of sight and I knew he would come back because I rewarded him and I did a really, uh, or I did a lot of training with, with getting a recall. So um, I wanted to, oh, before I forget, definitely comment below if any of you guys are on, share the replay, uh, watch the replay, share this with others. And I do want to ask you right now, do you like to be outside with your dog? And what do you like to do outside with your dog? So are you somebody that like to walk with your dog on the leash, off the leash. What does that look like for you? Comment below, especially if you're in the replay, because the more um, comments you leave, the better value you're gonna receive and the more I'm gonna be able to help you out. So I wanted to present an outdoor challenge and I thought this was a really good time of year to do it because most of us, you know, have no problem with taking our dogs outside in the summer and the spring. But once it starts getting cooler and we start thinking about winter and then the holidays are coming, Thanksgiving and Christmas, a lot of us stop taking our dogs out as often um, or we struggle with it. Maybe the walks are shorter, we're just busier, we got a lot more going on. So I wanted to present this challenge to challenge you to take your dog outside for exercise during the holiday season, even if it is cold, and to help you be accountable with doing that. And I'm gonna help you be accountable through these um, weekly calls, dog skills at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Facebook. I'm going to be doing from now until January 1st, 
different Facebook Lives that are going to help you with this outdoor challenge. So if you're struggling with even taking your dog out because your dog doesn't behave on the leash or doesn't behave off the leash, then you can still participate in this challenge because I'm going to be teaching you a lot of things that uh, you need to know to get your dog to be really well behaved on and off the leash for this outdoor challenge. So in this particular um, dog skills today, or in this particular topic today, we're gonna be focusing on getting your dog to walk really well on the leash. So I wanted to start off by asking who has a dog that pulls on the leash? And definitely comment below if you are somebody that does. I would love to hear from you. And I want to let you know in this challenge, the person who attends the most Facebook Lives will receive is Leash Walking a Drag, a loose leash walking webinar. So today we are going to be covering how to get your dog to walk nicely on the leash. But let's say you're still struggling with it after you watch this. You're probably missing some tools and techniques that I cover in this webinar. Um, uh, is leash walking a drag, a loose leash walking webinar does go through how to create your dog to walk loosely on the leash much more in depth than I'm going to be able to cover today. So you will receive that entire webinar for free if you attend the most Facebook Lives between now and January 1st. And so I really want to invite you to keep coming back each Wednesday so you will be entered to win. And I do want to let you know that many, many people have watched this webinar and they have paid to go and came out with great results. So you get it totally for free if you keep coming back for these Facebook Lives. So again, today we're going to be focusing on getting our dog to walk nicely on the leash and giving you some tips on that. There, I don't know if there's a way to make these slides. Let's see, maybe I can do that so you're not seeing much of the next slide here. So I'm still learning how to do everything on Facebook. I use Zoom all the time with my private clients, but I don't stream through Facebook. So what does a loose leash look like? Basically, there is no tension in the leash or there's a J in the leash. And a lot of people do get confused on what a loose leash is. They think, oh, the dog's not pulling that hard. It is a loose leash. Well, if the dog is pulling and you're walking forward, then you are rewarding that leash tension. So you really want to make sure that there's a J in the leash when you're training this. And we do want to stay away from things that are going to cause pain in your dog. So stay away from choker and prong collars. Um, they even make harnesses that tighten up around your dog's girth. Um, all of those things are causing pain. And when you're dealing with that, you could cause a dog to develop aggression or fear problems. So a flat collar is going to work great for a lot of dogs. Um, if you do want to use a tool that is going to help you out, I definitely love the front hook harness. Um, and PetSafe makes that. They're a great harness to invest in. And I'm wondering what tools have you used to help reduce pulling on the leash? Let me know, because I would love to hear about those tools. And then I can comment back to you and give you some advice on how to use them, or you can tell me how they're working for you. And a clicker can speed up learning. If you really don't want to use a clicker, you can use a yes marker. But the clicker is much more noticeable to your dog than the word yes. Who has heard of or used clicker training? Let me know. I, I would love to, to hear from you. 
So frequent clicks and treats can help your dog to walk loosely on the leash. It really can help your dog be a lot more successful. And this is when I'm going to need to flip the screens because I want to show you a video. on a, you know, an owner doing those frequent clicks and treats. So when I have downloaded as a presentation on Canva, I can see the comments, but I cannot play my video. So if anyone knows a workaround on that, let me know. It's going to take a little bit of time to upload, it looks like. Hmm. There we go. And let me make sure I got, um, let me make sure I share the sound and optimize the video. Didn't do that. That might have been why it took a little bit of time. I forgot to do that. And that is the wrong screen. So many um, things to overcome when I learn a new platform. Well, it looks like it closed up. I must have bumped the button and closed up my window. So let me get it re-pulled up here. Now, while I'm doing that, um, we'll kind of talk a little bit about those frequent clicks and treats. So by clicking frequently when the leash is loose, you are telling the dog you're doing a really good job. You're going to get rewarded for having a loose leash. So um, if you do frequent clicks and treats and you're not rewarding the loose leash, it's not going to do much of anything. So you need to make sure that you are only clicking when that leash is loose. Okay. Now I think I got the right one here. And the volume is a little quiet, but um, listen closely. Did you hear that click? The owner is doing frequent clicks and treats when there is a loose leash. And that's the best way to train loose leash walking. So, so again, those frequent clicks and treats are rewarding the dog for having the loose leash and are very, very important in helping your dog to learn to walk loosely on the leash. And again, I apologize. That is going to be a little broken when I go between the screen sharing here and the videos. Uh, I know you're gonna get really good value anyway. So one other, uh, the other thing that you wanna kind of pay attention to is making it easy for both you and your dog to learn. So a lot of times we wanna start outside in the hardest environment possible because our goal is to walk them at this park that we really like that has a lot of dogs and people around. Usually um, that's not gonna work so well if you're struggling with loose leash walking. If you have a dog that just grasps the concept really quick, might work. Um, but if you're somebody that's struggling with it, you want to start indoors or in your yard first, and you want to keep your leash walks short. So five or 10 minutes is, is plenty of time. So I did also want to talk about um, some things that do happen when we walk our dogs, especially if you have a puppy. Like some puppies are going to be biting and playing with the leash or playing tug with the leash. And I wanted to talk about some different things that you can do to help stop that from happening. Um, training drop can be helpful. Redirecting to a tug toy and training target. So I'm gonna share this video on how to train drop. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to start with an object that your dog actually can have. So you're going to work on training this at home with a toy versus on your leash walks right away. Oh, and I think I had a note on where I wanted to put up at. Okay, cool. Hi again. So we are here again with Brody, and I'm wondering if you are running away from you. So Lily okay, so I'm going to explain how to train it. You're going to see that I have a toy in my hand, and I want you to notice what I do to get Rody to drop that toy, and then when he drops it, that I click and treat. You want to initially train, train it, use something that, you know, is theirs and that they can have, um, have them do something good, like sit first, give it to them, and then you just want to think about doing a trade-off. Rody, drop! Okay. So, he has a little map. So notice I'm giving the dog that item that they want, their toy, and they're allowed to have it. I show them a treat. Dog wants a treat, spits out the toy, and then I click when the dog spits out the toy and give the treat. And I say the command drop as the dog spits it out. So that's a really great way to train the drop command. And again, you want to be practicing it a lot at home, um, and you can even practice it on your walks with the toy that they're allowed to have. And then once you feel like your dog is starting to understand the command and you're getting success with it, that's when I would start doing it on your actual leash walks. And then redirecting to a tug toy can be a good thing to do too. So you could ask your dog to drop and then get them to redirect to a tug toy um, or you could even uh, bring a tug toy with you on your walks and just encourage your dog to go after the tug toy and not the leash. So the tug toy could prevent your dog from chewing on the leash. It also could be a way to redirect your dog after you get them to drop the leash and you click and treat that. Then you say, hey, play tug with this instead. So. I wanted to show you a video. This isn't a dog pulling on the leash or playing tug with the leash, but it is an owner um, that is playing tug with his dog and doing drop with the tug toy. So you can think of when, when he is asking the dog to drop, you could think of, okay, that's the leash. And now we're redirecting to the tug toy. Um, but you can also teach your dog drop with the tug toy too, and make it into a game as well. Uh, the biggest thing is that you're encouraging your dog to drop that leash and play tug with a tug toy instead. Tug. Leave it. Good job. So he's using the command leave it instead of um, drop, and that's completely fine. But again, notice how when the dog spit it out, he gave a treat. All right, so if that was a dog like playing with the leash, then that's what we would do, right? We would show him the treat, tell him drop, click and treat, and then we would bring out the tug toy and encourage them to play with that. So now we have the tug toy out. <laughs> the owner's going to say play tug. Tug. Leave it. So in your case, if your dog is going after the leash, you may not be encouraging them to drop the tug toy a lot, but you may be encouraging them to drop the leash a lot and then redirecting them to a tug toy or getting them to tug the tug toy instead of the leash. So this could actually stop your dog from going after the leash altogether. Another option would be that you could use a chain leash a lot of dogs do not want to chew on a chain leash, or you could spray a leash with bitter apple or bitter orange. That'll last about two to three hours, so you'll need to reapply it. Um, but that can really help with that as well. 
So then the next one I wanted to talk about is Target. So again, Target can help prevent your dog from biting on the leash or tugging the leash. And it's getting a dog to touch their muzzle to your hand. So I want you to notice how the owner is clicking and treating when the dog touches his muzzle to his hand. And imagine if this is a dog that's thinking about biting a leash, if they're choosing to touch their nose to your hand, then they're going to be less likely to be biting that leash. So there you go, his hand is out, it's got food in it, dog touches the hand and he clicks and treats, Maggie, touch. does the command, Maggie touched the hand and then he clicked and treated, Maggie, touch. Yes. Maggie, touch. Yes. So if this were a puppy that really wanted to bite on that leash, if he was thinking about touching the hand and said he's going to be less likely to do that. So you do have a lot of different options that you could try to mediate that problem. And I did have somebody in the comments that, um, during a live call that had this question. So I'm answering it for that person. So anytime you guys comment, it allows me to include a whole Facebook Live on that particular topic if it's needed or to answer your question within um, a Facebook Live. So commenting really gives you um, a, lot of, a lot of rewards um, to get that training support that, that you need. So definitely make sure that you comment below. All right, let's see if there is anybody on. And that's okay, because I'm sure a lot of people will watch the replay. So now we're going to go through some different methods to reduce leash pulling. So one of the most common ones is changing direction. So the dog pulls on the leash and then the owner walks the other way. So I want you to notice here that when this dog pulls on the leash that the owner does a complete 180 and walks in the other direction. So coming up here, the dog is going to pull and you're going to see the owner turn to her right. Oh, and you know what? Oh, you know what? There, I clicked the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Let's get back to the right video. Here we go. Try it again. I don't remember what buttons to press on these things. All right, and I think if I do this, no, I thought I could make a full screen on the video as well. There we go. All right, so let's get to that spot. It's coming up here. You're gonna see the dog pull and then the owner turns around. There's the pulling, no J. Owner turns back around, there's a J in the leash, and she clicks in treats. Easy. Hugs a little bit off the camera there. Okay, this is a homework video that a client has set, sent to me. I worked with her on leash walking all through a private Zoom dog training sessions. So here we got some tension and she turns in the opposite direction again. And she probably could have turned again for that one where, 
with that minor pulling, but the dog kind of lessened up on on its own. And then we can get that quick and treat in there as soon as that leash is loose. So I'm gonna show you another video of an owner using changing directions. And on this one, the dog is wanting to actually smell different things. Ah, you guys can tell I'm probably a little nervous because I'm all like all these buttons. I'm like, ah, oh, so much easier when I just use straight zoom. Um, okay, so dog is walking on the leash. Owner's gonna click and treat the loose leash. Dog's gonna like think of a smell that he wants to pull towards. And notice how the owner kind of turns away from the smell. And there's gonna be like some words on the screen up here that kind of walk you through it. So I'll let you watch it and read those words so you can notice how that owner is turning away from this when the dog's pulling on the leash towards the smell and walking forward when the leash is loose. <music> a fun one. I like that one. That particular client I actually did in person and I can do in person training in um, Mineral Lake in Ohio in Middlefield. But definitely the online has a lot of benefits. So here you're going to see me um, change directions when there's tension on leash and then click and treat when that leash is loose. Got to remember the exact button to push every time. <laughs> That's really testing me. Um, so you, that one was really nice because you could see a lot of that changing directions, right? There was a lot of that happening, and it was very consistent and only forward movement when that leash was loose. So another option would be to back up when your dog pulls on the leash. So um, you're going to notice here when the Leash is loose, the owner walks forward, leash is tense. The owner backs up and then clicks and, le clicks and treats once that leash is loose. So we'll go to about here. And then just so you know, this is a homework video that this client sent to me. 
Um, and we did all of the training through Zoom uh, private. And she had a lot of stuff that she wanted to do outside and we made a lot of progress. So um, here, dog's gonna pull. Owner takes steps back until she's got the loose leash, clicks and treats, goes forward and clicks and treats that loose leash. And she goes off the camera for a little bit and that's okay. So I keep getting it when she's off the camera, don't I? There we go. So we can see she's walking forward with the leash loose and getting some clicks and treats in there for our loose leash. She's doing some other commands or untangling the leash there. This dog actually picked up on this in like two weeks. Um, pretty fast, the owner was very consistent. And here's another one that you can see with backing up as well. So again, I want you to notice how the owner backs up and then clicks and treats when that leash is loose. And I'm just gonna let this video play. We're in Garrettsville with Rachel and Max and we're working on leash walking. I'm wondering if you have a dog that pulls on the leash a lot or a dog that just constantly smells on the ground when you walk them. So it's really well for you. Um, Rachel, you can go ahead and just got keep doing tension what I there. You, So you'll back up when, the, when, the, when there's that tension on the leash. Yep. So notice how she backed up there with her feet and now she's going to move forward now that there's that J in that leash. And there's your click. And then you're going to walk forward again because you have that nice loose leash. Now this particular dog, when she goes forward, immediately starts pulling again. So you really get to see how important it is to be consistent with backing up or changing directions every time your dog pulls on that leash. And there's tension again, so you'd back up. Yep, there you go. Click, walk forward. Mm -hmm. Click there, not there. Okay, don't treat that one. Oops, we already did. So recommit to... So basically, I was telling her to not reward that one because the dog was jumping. So we do want to make sure that we got four on the ground um, going on when you click so that you're rewarding the dog for not pulling and not jumping. Not treating if you accidentally clicked when he's jumping because we don't want to reward the jumping. Okay. So yes. use your target to get him back target. to your side. There's an example of target to move Very your dog. Nice. Good. Back we got up. tension. She's going to back up. Click. And get that so click in there for a loose leash. I think that's the last, yeah, video on those. So my question to you would be, Have you used any of these methods? Or either of these methods, I guess I should say. And you could even comment on if they were working for you or not. And you wanna make sure you do certain things to decrease leash pulling. Of course, we did talk about the click and treat frequently when that leash is loose. And we want to make sure that we're consistent. So be consistent with not walking forward when the leash is tense. If you walk forward when there is tension on the leash, your dog is going to be rewarded for that leash tension. So that consistency is super important. Do you find it hard to be consistent with training during leash walks? Are you kind of more attached to just going on a walk and forget to do that training? Let me know. I would love to hear that in the comments below. And your mindset affects how well you can apply these tools. So you want to focus on training your dog rather than walking to a destination. And you want to wonder, how can I create successful leash walking with my dog? Have you used any mindset tools when leash training your dog?
I would love to know because your mind affects your actions. So your thoughts are going to affect if you're able to follow through or not and apply these tools. I tell my clients all the time, knowing the tools is one thing, applying them is a completely different thing. And knowing the tools is probably only about 10% of dog training. Application, 90%. So a lot of dog training is about your mindset. How is, what are you thinking and how is that affecting your ability to be consistent? I'm frustrated with my dog pulls, so I'm gonna to choose to walk forward, right? Do you have that thought? Are you aware of it? Start getting awareness of those thoughts that are causing you to not be consistent and change them to a wonder question. I wonder how I can successfully get my dog to walk loosely on the leash. I wonder what I can do to help my dog learn this. What will you change to get your dog to walk loose on the leash? So as um, I gave you all these tips, I would love to hear what are some things that you're gonna do differently yourself that's gonna help your dog to walk loosely on that leash. Please, please, please comment below so that I can give you feedback and help you out. Yeah, again, comment, watch the replay, share this video with others because we do want to um, help people out and help them be able to complete this outdoor challenge. So again, um, if anyone has missed the beginning of the video, the outdoor challenge is about taking your dog outside for exercise this holiday season, even when it's cold. Now until January 1st, um, we are going to help you be accountable by doing Facebook Lives every single week that are gonna help you with this outdoor challenge. You're gonna learn how to get your dog to behave on the leash and off the leash so that it's easy to take your dog outside. And we know how hard it is to wanna take our dogs out once the weather gets cold and the holidays are coming up. So that's why we wanted to do this challenge because we wanted to be there supporting you to get the exercise, exercise that you need as well as your dog. And we will choose a winner. So the person who attends the most Facebook Live during this outdoor leash walk, walking challenge will receive a free webinar. So between now and January 1st is when that challenge is going on, okay? And if you attend the most Facebook Lives, which are every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you attend the most of those, so you gotta make sure you comment so I know that you're there, then you will receive a webinar on loose leash walking called Is Leash Walking a Drag? Or you might be thinking, well, I just watched a whole bunch of uh, training techniques and tools right now on how to get my dog to walk loosely on the leash. I'm gonna tell you this loose leash walking webinar is packed full of information way more than is covered in this Facebook Live. Plus, there's a lot of people commenting on there. Um, I'm answering their questions. They're telling me how, it wor how things are working for them, um, what they're struggling with. So you get a lot more knowledge in there. There's a lot of secrets and tools that are missing that are not in this particular Facebook Live that are in this webinar. So. If you apply this stuff here and it works, great. But if you're somebody that really wants to know more about how to get your dog to walk loose and leash, then I would be someone that watches every single Facebook Live or as many that you can, because instead of having to pay for this webinar, you're gonna get it for free. And people have paid for it and they've came out with great results. So make sure you keep coming back every Wednesday and watch the Facebook Live so you can win and make sure you comment so that I know that you are there. I also wanted to talk about that you might be the perfect fit for our dream dog program. In this program, you're gonna feel much peace and confidence when you're walking your dog both on and off the leash because you are, your dog is going to reliably listen to your command. So if you're like want to take this outdoor leash walking challenge to the next level and you want personalized help that's private, this would be the perfect program for you. You're gonna come out and you're gonna be like, great, I can take my dog pretty much anywhere and my dog's gonna respond really well. And the cool thing is we can help you no matter where you live. All you need is the internet, a smartphone, a computer, or a tablet. 
And what you'll receive in the Dream Dog program, your dog will quickly learn because I won't be there personally distracting your dog. And you also will be held accountable to do your homework by submitting videos to me. So both of these things I kind of want to explain a little bit more. So when I come to your house or I meet you somewhere at the park, um, I'm an added variable. I'm either super distracting to your dog, they're super excited to see me, or they're just immediately on their best behavior. We want to get your dog to listen to you, not to me. So we don't need me being there, being that distraction, or just being that person that's all of a sudden getting your dog to listen. We want your dog to listen to you. We want to empower you to get your dog to respond. So by doing it online, it's allowing that to happen. I also have had some dogs that are scared or aggressive um, when you know people are around. Well, I'm not immune to that, and that's really stressful on the dog. So if I'm not there, then I can teach you how to deal with that problem without putting your dog under an immense amount of stress. So in this um, Dream Dog program, you will be able to submit those homework videos. So like you saw those dogs that were walking on the leash, a lot of those were um, from people that have worked with me online and took a video of themselves doing their homework. And then we screen share it and I give you feedback that way. So when we screen share the videos, you're learning as a chance because you, you aren't receiving feedback while also training your dog. You're watching yourself, which is absolutely wonderful. So to book a free phone chat, go to this link here. Um, and I also have it in the, the comments below. There's also um, a link that you can go to in the comments below um, that will tell you more about the services and the things that we offer. Um, so they are pinned at the top. Um, go ahead and click on either of those links if you want to learn more about us or if you want to schedule a free phone chat. I am so glad that you watched this today. I really hope that it's helped you out and I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.